My team positions the patient in supine frog leg by placing anatomic rolls beneath the knees to provide lateral leg support. We use a shaver for the scrotum and remove all of the hair fragments. A preoperative scrub is used and I choose chloroprep. Once the patient is fully draped, I like to mark the median raphae of the scrotum. Then I mark the position of a transverse scrotal incision. The OR manual indicates a vertical incision. However, I choose to make the incision horizontal as it enhances exposure in some men. We want our incision to be below the penoscrotal junction to make use of the pliability of the scrotal tissue. Generally, I like to mark this with the penis not on stretch so that I can see exactly how it's going to heal. Once the incision is marked, I conceal all of the exposed skin with an ioband drape. The ioband keeps the penis retracted while minimizing skin exposure. Then we place our Foley catheter. I make our incision with a 15 blade scalpel at the marked site. My entry into the scrotum and dartos tissue is brisk, clean, and hemostatic. Identification of appropriate tissue planes makes the dissection easy, and we only divide necessary tissue to avoid postoperative swelling and pain. The scrotal contents are pushed down with gentle, blunt dissection. The penis is then elevated out of the wound on gentle stretch, and any remaining crossing veins or connective tissue may be dissected caudally. I choose to use a 6-inch Metzenbaum scissors and incise Buck's fascia directly down to the urethra, or corpus spongiosum, which you can see immediately here. This is our best anatomic indicator of being in the correct surgical plane. I then release Buck's fascia over the corpus cavernosa on each side. There is no absolute need to make the corpora cavernosa pristinely clean as long as you can make out all important anatomic landmarks that you need to safely and accurately position the corporotomies. Here we have a beautiful anatomic plane where we can see this cleft between the corpus cavernosa and the corpus spongiosum. Now I can develop this avascular plane which will lead us down all the way to the insertion of the corpora onto the inferior pubic rami. We can also see the crossing of his ischiocavernosus muscle. I now want to mark the site of our corporotomies. I mark the groove between the corpus spongiosum and the corpus cavernosa. There are crossing veins and I prefer to leave them in situ. The line marks the location of my incision and these dots mark where I'm going to place my stay stitches. I will extend my incision below where my stitches are to allow for tubing egress. And I estimate that our incision is one and a half centimeters in total length, which will allow us to easily implant the device. Next we place our stay sutures. These are full thickness bites that are placed evenly. I try to match those paired holding stitches so that they line up on either side. Now I do the identical steps on the other side. We now incise the corpora cavernosa, and I prefer to do this sharply with gentle brush strokes to avoid over dissection. I now use the Metzenbaum to develop the intracavernosal space. AMS recommends using the furlough tool or the AMS measuring tool. I choose to use the Euromix dilator, and that way I can dilate and measure the corpora at the same time. I gently twist the dilator and avoid aggressive pushing. With the wall of the corpora on tension, dilation is easy. I measure directly from the dilator, 
right proximal 9 centimeters. I now pull out and change the trajectory of the dilator toward the distal corpora. I angle the dilator laterally toward the ipsilateral shoulder. With a rotational motion, I advance the dilator to beneath the gland's penis. Again, we measure from the dilator. Right distal measurement is 12 centimeters. We measured proximally 9 and distally 12 for a total measurement of 21 centimeters. These steps are repeated on the contralateral side. I fan out my fingers over the urethra to assure that the dilator does not cross over to the opposite side. If the dilator begins to deviate, or if I notice that I don't have even spacing of the corpora, that might indicate a crossover event. Again, I feel the tip of the dilator under the glands. If we're having trouble reaching the dilator to the tip, I feel it is important that we push the glands down to the dilator rather than the dilator into the glands. Forcing the dilator into the glands can lead to a distal corporal perforation. The patient measured proximally 9 cm and distally 12 for a total measurement of 21 cm. For these measurements, I will select an 18 cm prosthesis, the AMS 700 LGX, with 3 cm rear tip extenders. There are multiple ways to accurately measure the corpora. I recommend that every surgeon have their own way that they use every time for accuracy and reproducibility. To implant the fluid reservoir, we want to create a pocket in the pre-vesicle space. I gently open the thin layer of fascia to prevent the external fat from occluding entry into the external inguinal ring. Now we can see the clean, glistening fat that overlies the external ring. I enter the pre-vesicle space in a very controlled fashion. I use the external ring and the posterior aspect of the pubic symphysis as my key landmarks. Our goal is to perforate through the transversalis fascia. I gently perforate the fascia with my METS by pushing medially against the symphysis. I then do limited, blunt finger dissection to assure that we are in the correct space. I've chosen to place a 100 milliliter conceal reservoir. I prefer to place the reservoir by leading with the cone end. I then use a finger over finger motion to assure smooth placement. The reservoir is withdrawn just slightly and we can see the cone tip emerging from the pre-vesicle space. This will assure easy removal if that ever becomes necessary. We will then fill the reservoir with an adequate amount of fluid for the size prosthesis that we have chosen. We are now ready to insert the cylinders. We use the furlough insertion tool and the Keith needle to help introduce the cylinders into the corpora cavernosa. Once the Keith needle is passed, the rear of the implant is placed in the proximal corpora cavernosa. I insert the tip of the cylinder into the corporotomy. And gently push the cylinder distally into place. We repeat this procedure and insert the remaining cylinder into the other corporal body. I'll gently occlude the corporotomies and we'll begin our surrogate reservoir test. In this case, I'm going to allow the implant to seat itself. I believe one of the benefits of the length and girth expanding cylinders, the AMS LGX, is that the implant itself will completely fill the space to allow for maximal utilization of a man's penile length. It is important not to oversize the implant. Here, you can see good central placement of the device, and we've got a really nice fit. 
you can see that the device is well flattened out and there is nice placement and a very small corporotomy. We can look at the opposite side and again we see excellent placement. Even with the stay stitches fully unapproximated, you can see that we've got good hemostasis already. Now I will close the corporotomies, tying our stay sutures in mattress fashion. And with this, we've got excellent apposition. Now it's time to position the pump. We are going to expose more skin for the first time. We expose the scrotum so I can have the most accurate placement. I create a vertical wall with the scrotal skin and I use a Metzenbaum scissors to form a pocket in the most dependent portion of the anterior midline scrotum. I then rotate my scissors cephalad to pass through the septum to create a nice mass of dartos tissue to cover the tubing and keep the implant components away from the skin surface. So again, here's our position. The bulb and the deflation button are easily palpable with the pump in this position. We connect the tubing using the AMS Quick Connect sutureless window connectors. Once connected, I prefer to do an inflate deflate test and do a final inspection of the device. I will close the incision in multiple layers. Then I remove the insertion sutures. We choose to apply Dermabond and then take a little fluid out of the device for patient comfort. However, I do leave the device partially inflated and then apply our final wrap to keep the penis up on the abdomen and the scrotum compressed.